Welcome to Lecture Online, and now let's take a closer look at the ellipse. Now, the ellipse can be oriented with the long or major axis horizontally or the major axis vertically. So here's an ellipse. When you take the longest axis of the ellipse, that's called the major axis, and this is called the minor axis. So the major axis here is horizontal, and here the major axis is vertical. What is the difference? How do you know by looking at the equation? Well, the general equation of an ellipse is x minus h quantity squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1, a and b not being the same quantity, and in this case, a is larger than b. So a squared would be larger than b squared, and if a squared is larger than b squared, the ellipse looks like this. Over here, you can see x minus a squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared equals 1. Again, a is bigger than b, so here x has a smaller denominator, y has a bigger denominator. Here x has a bigger denominator, y has a smaller denominator, which causes the ellipse to be vertically oriented like that. The major axis is vertically oriented. For simplicity, let's say that h equals k equals 0. Well, that places the center of the ellipse at the origin, and this is what the ellipse would look like. Again, here, if h equals k equals 0, then that places the center of the ellipse at the origin. If h and k are not equal to 0, or either one is not equal to 0, it would displace the ellipse with the center somewhere else, wherever h and k happen to be. Now, for simplicity, I wanted to show you an example. If h and k go to 0, then the equation is simplified like this. Here's a simple example. x squared divided by 5 squared plus y squared divided by 3 squared equals 1. Again, that places the ellipse at the origin. Here's an example. Notice that when y is equal to 0, that would be on the x-axis, then x squared divided by y squared equals 1, if this goes away, then x squared equals 5 squared, if you put 5 squared over there, and x equals 5, that means when y equals 0, x is negative 5 and positive 5, because when you have x squared equals 5 squared, then x would be the plus or minus the square root. Over here, the same thing, when y is equal to 0, that would be on the x-axis, you can then see that x squared equals 3 squared, or x equals plus or minus 3, that would put it over there and over there, that makes it skinny in this direction, long in that direction. So you can play around with the numbers and see that that's indeed the case. Now we haven't looked yet at the foci of the ellipse. Ellipses have foci that will be in the next video. We'll show you some more details. I just wanted you to see the difference between an ellipse that is oriented sideways like this, that's oriented vertically like that. It just has to do with the numbers underneath at the bottom of the fraction, the numbers in the denominator. If a is bigger than b, if a is underneath x, then we can see it opens this way. If b here is smaller than a, then we can see that the ellipse is in that direction. So that's a good start. That's the general equation of an ellipse. And notice that the way it's oriented simply is determined by the size of the, of the denominators in the general equation. All right, if you're still interested, take a look at the next video, and we'll start looking at the foci of the ellipses as well.